And joining us now, Rupinder Brar, lecturer, University of Ontario, Institute of Technology, Physics and Astronomy, and a guy I have to congratulate. Well done. Thanks, I really appreciate that. Your second time, right, competing in this? That's right. But first victory. That's right. So first you got time. the vote out better this time. How'd you do that? <laughs> Uh, it was a mix of a couple of things. I think uh, my lecture this time was a lot more accessible, uh, I think, to the general public. Last time I talked about special relativity, this time I talked about exoplanets. Yes, that sounds much more accessible than the former. <laughs> I would agree. Right. Um, well, well, <laughs> excuse me? Well, I, it actually, I came down to my, uh, my mother-in-law uh, at the time. Um, she did not actually rate me very high during my first lecture. She maybe didn't think it was as good as it could be. So I thought, this time I'm definitely going to make it more aimed at the mother-in-law crowd. And you got it this time. That's right. Because you got to secure the base, first and foremost, exactly. right? Exactly. Well, you know politics, don't you, Rapina? Because you ran in the 2006 federal election in one of the Mississauga ridings. That's right. And you came really badly. <laughs> uh, well, I, I came third. You came third, I yes. Came third. You ran for the New Democrats, we should say, and Mississauga is not exactly fertile territory for the NDP. That's right. In fact, I increased uh, the vote by about 30%, uh, the NDP vote in that uh, riding. So You got over 11% of the vote. Yeah, I, I achieved what I, I wanted to in the uh, election, other but, than winning. <laughs> well, I was going to say, does this make up for that rather terrible showing that day? Uh, this has nothing to do with that, no. <laughs> okay, you know I'm pulling your leg. Right. Okay. You're a scientist, yes. you're engaged by physics, astronomy. Why would you run for office? Um, a lot of people ask me that at the time, and, and I would tell them, why do so many lawyers run for office? Um, I use the scientific method to solve problems, and I see no reason why that shouldn't be applied to social problems. Um, there are so many... Um, issues out there affecting whatever, including education, for example, that I think are better suited to be solved by people who are in the field and understand what's actually going on. But the conventional wisdom is that politics is an art, not a science. And that's why there are so many people who, are, who have no scientific background at all in politics. Did you find yourself a fish out of water in that Not at all. No? I mean, I, I think I have a bit of a diverse uh, background, which actually helps me to be a good university lecturer as well. Um, I, I come from a little bit of a drama background as well, so the ideas of performing as well as having actually something substantive to say um, combines really well uh, as, as a university lecturer. And let's not uh, forget that one of the um, criticisms, I think, of Barack Obama uh, in the last uh, couple of years has been his university lecturing style <laughs> of politics. Mm -hmm. Which you uh, appreciate? Love. You love that about it. Love it. Uh, given the choice between going into space someday or becoming a member of parliament, which would it have been? Space, absolutely. Space over politics. Yeah, no, that, that's been the ultimate dream since I was two years old, as far, as, as far back as I can remember, was to, uh, to go to outer space. What lit that fuse for you? I'm not exactly sure what the, what the start of it was. I just remember forever I either loved dinosaurs or I loved outer space. And that, that's what led to the physics and the astronomy, not the other way around. Hmm. And what's the, f you know where the fascination for space comes from? Um, I can't really say. You must have seen Star Trek as a kid or something like that, no? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched those as a kid, but uh, actually growing up, I have to admit, the Star Trek The Next Generation was my favorite show, so, <laughs> so that must have helped. Uh, the X-Men movies, you were in one of them. Yeah, I was in the first one. It was shot here in Toronto, so. Uh, um, How'd you get that gig? Well, it's, it's a bit embarrassing. X-Men, uh, the comic book franchise, is one of my favorite um, fictional franchises. And once I heard they were filming in Toronto, I was like, I am getting in that movie, period. Um, so how'd you do it? And found out on the internet where they were shooting, went in for a casting call. I grew a beard to uh, uh, make myself more appropriate for the, the role they were casting for. Which was what? Um, they wa basically wanted to fill uh, a United Nations World Summit, and they were looking for people of a certain age and dignity, if you will. Uh, I didn't get cast as a United Nations delegate, but they cast me as a, as a translator. And did you have a speaking part of the movie? I had a speaking part in the movie. Okay. Yeah. And uh, did you make some money? I'm, I still get checks from the x -Men. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. You still get residuals? I still get residuals every three months. Isn't it? That... <laughs> How much? What do they give you? Uh, it gets less and less <laughs> as the, as the uh, um, 
memory of the movie is starting <laughs> to dwindle in young people's minds. So, um, you know, if, if you're interested, uh, buy is it in the hundreds or thousands or what's it? It's in, in the hundreds. It's in the hundreds. Days. So not enough to give up your university lecture no, and career. Oh, to, enough to buy X Men comic books, basically. <laughs> that's good. Well, you are actually you're, you don't have to buy them. You're working on one of your own, aren't you? Oh, that's right. Yeah. What's uh, that about? Uh, well, um, basically, I have two uh, comics going. There's the Grade Twenty comic, which is uh, something that my me and my friend uh, worked on, and uh, that comic was about graduate students and sort of uh, their life and uh, the situations that they get into. Uh, since then, I've actually moved on to a newer comic that I'm, I'm currently developing. Do you have a problem being taken seriously as a scientist and a person of letters, as it were, while working on comic books at the same time? I've never really had those two worlds clash. Um, so they, they're kind of separate from one another. So, so no one's ever called me out on it. And you would be surprised how many uh, of my colleagues are also uh, interested in, uh, in such pursuits. Your fellow professors at University of Ontario Institute all of over, Technology. All over, all um, over. From my graduate days at Queen's University, we had uh, quite the, the number of uh, young people who are not only reading comic books, but making their own web comics as well. Hmm. What, what's the storyline on the Grade 20 comic? The Grade 20 comic is actually, um, so again, it's about these two graduate students, and it starts sort of very mundanely with sort of that um, four um, panel funny sort of comic, but it changes very quickly into uh, dealing with different genres of comics. And so we have our, our sort of noir, our superhero, our anime, or I guess it's called manga officially. And so essentially it goes from being about graduate uh, students to actually being about comic books and what makes a comic book hmm. instead. And you call it comic book, not graphic novel, because eh? I thought everybody's supposed to call it graphic novel. <sighs> graphic nowadays. novel is pretentious. Oh, okay. It's a comic book. <laughs> okay. I can handle that. And do you do the, the editorial side, I guess, right? Is, the, is what your involvement is? The story is you. Uh, and drawing. And you do the drawing as well? Yeah. yeah. So I, I co-write, and then uh, I do the drawings myself. And at what point do you see this surpassing Superman for all-time <laughs> comic book fame? Uh, sometime <laughs> past when we sell out of our first printing, which has not happened yet. I see. Yeah. Do you see, you know, sometime when I'm going to be able to go down to the Silver Snail on Queen Street and buy this thing? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah? Yeah. Does this comic book business make you cooler with your students? Um, I think so, but I don't think cool is the right word. Maybe more accessible to my students. But the thing is, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real sort of thing. And it's not just comic books. It's, uh, you know, whether we're uh, mentioning uh, the, the latest movie or music or something like that. I think being aware of what young people are into does make my teaching more accessible to them. Because I'm guessing it's a fine line between those who will think, hey, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, Rapunda's into the whole comic book scene. And there will be those who think, ooh, serious geek. <laughs> right? yeah. do, you, do you get both reactions? Uh, the, the ones who, who go the geek way do not speak up in class. Because um, they want to pass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so. I get it. Uh, okay, let's raise a bit of a politically incorrect issue here, but you're into the okay. sciences, and what the heck, this is what we do here anyway. Okay. Asian kids seem to do way better in science than non-Asian kids. Mm -hmm. Do you have any theory as to why that is? I think it has 100% to do with... Um, the parents. Um, when immigrants from Asian countries come to Canada and their first generation children are put into university, uh, the areas that are emphasized, I think, are the sciences, the mathematics, the sciences. These are what's going to lead to uh, the jobs of the future and uh, prestige and, and this sort of thing. And so, I mean, even for myself growing up, um, it was basically, my father was like, be an engineer. My mom was like, be a medical doctor. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to be a physicist hmm. instead. But, but I'm sure that that, that helped uh, push me in that direction. Are your folks born here or over there? They are born uh, both in India. Both in India. Yeah. And you felt that as you were growing up, you had that sense that they, you know, the arts were not for you. You were going to be going into the sciences one way or the other. Pretty much, yeah. Um, we were um, sort of shown that this was a, almost a more valued area to, to pursue, um, you know, whether it's uh, physics, engineering, mathematics. These are all um, 
prestigious sort of careers for, for uh, young Asian people. Okay, let me do one more thing with you, and that is, uh, it seems to be, uh, we live in a world that is increasingly shaped by science, mm -hmm. and yet our basic knowledge of science as a society seems quite substandard these days. Right. What do you think, I mean, you're in the business of uh, molding young people's minds, what do you think needs to be done to change that? There's so many things that, that could be done to improve our um, valuing science more. Um, just this past weekend, I'm director of the Durham Region Science Fair, and we had uh, our science fair, and, and we had three winners that were sending to the Canada-wide science fair. All three of them uh, were girls. And this is one thing that I think really needs to be emphasized, is that uh, science and mathematics and physics, et cetera, is, is a good... Uh, route for for a young woman to go down and and there, there's some sort of disconnect at some point between um, sort of the the early elementary grades and what happens in university where we see so many more uh, males going into the hard sciences than females mm. uh, I think that if we emphasized it more with young ladies that uh, um, that would help uh, us overall as a society and you'll forgive my curiosity here all three females yep of what ethnic backgrounds uh, they were all Caucasian. Caucasian girls. Yep. So that's a, very much against the, uh, the sort of stereotype, if it you is. will. It is, yeah. Huh. yeah. Did you find that uh, encouraging? Oh, yeah. That's great. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And they were great projects, too. Last question. How much money do you win for being the best lecturer? Uh, I win zero dollars. You win zero dollars? Yeah, but the university uh, gets $10,000 for scholarships, which will go towards students who um, uh, deserve them and need them, and, and that's good enough for me. Now, I knew it was 10 grand, but I just wondered how much of the piece of that action you got. Uh, nothing at all. Nothing right? at all. Just I get the, a trophy. You get a trophy and the glory. Yeah. And the glory. There's a lot of glory. Well done. Thanks a lot, Steve. <laughs> Rapinder, congratulations. Thanks for visiting us at TVO to talk to us about it tonight. Thanks. I appreciate it.